Have you ever looked at other programmers and wondered how do they get so much done so fast? Well, it's not just because they have skills or raw talent. It's because a lot of them use productivity hacks that help them streamline their workflow. Now, some of these hacks are software, some of them are hardware, some of them you might not even expect. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the productivity hacks that I use to help me code faster, stay focused longer, and build projects more efficiently. So the first thing, and arguably the most important before we even get into gear, is let's talk about mindset. You know, before you even start coding, you wanna be in the right mindset to get work done. And the two most important things when it comes to mindset is you should be sleeping well and eating healthy. You know, coding is gonna put a lot of stress on your brain, so you want your brain running at its fullest potential. Studies show that getting less than seven hours of sleep can cut reaction time and memory performance almost in half which is pretty brutal if you're trying to debug code or keep a lot of moving parts going in your head. And then when it comes to diet, it's not like you have to eat perfectly clean, but eating junk food right before or during work is gonna cause your energy to crash. And now the second thing that's really important before you even start coding is setting up your desktop. On my computer, I set up multiple desktops for different tasks. So I'll have an entire desktop dedicated to coding, and then I'll have another entire desktop for things like communication via Discord or Slack or email. You know, technically I have two monitors, so I actually keep all my communication stuff on one monitor while I have all my work on the other monitor to keep that separation. But if you only had one monitor, you could still make it work if you just set up different screen spaces for different things. But I think this separation is huge, separating your coding area from communication so that you don't get distracted while you work. This way, when you're coding, you're only seeing coding related things. You're not seeing messages popping up and distracting you from what you're doing. These things might be simple, but this is just the foundation for everything else I'm gonna talk about in this video. Because once all that's out of the way, all the gear and software hacks work even better. All right, now let's talk about gear. Logitech recently sent me the MX Master 4 mouse, the MX Mechanical Keyboard, and the MX Brio webcam. This stuff is game changing for me. It's not just nice to have, it actually removes a lot of friction from my workflow. Let's start with the MX Master 4. This mouse has become a productivity cheat code. It allows you to map different functionalities to every single part of the mouse. All this customization can be done through Logitech's Logi Options Plus software. I'll link it in the description. It's completely free to download. It lets you remap buttons, set up smart actions, and even customize the scroll wheel. And another detail I really love about this mouse is the haptic feedback. And the MX Master 4 introduces the new action ring right under your thumb. It's a customizable radial control pad with haptic feedback. So whenever I trigger an action, I feel a tactile click that makes it more precise and more immersive. I map the side scroll to switch between my desktop screens easily. That way, with just a flick of my finger, I can go from VS code to documentation to GitHub and so on. I also map one of the buttons to instantly open ChatGPT, which is really nice in the case if I'm stuck on something or I need to ask a question while I'm coding, click the button, Boom, ChatGPT. And it's not that I can't just open it separately on my own, but having these things at a click of a button or a swipe of a wheel makes the whole process just a lot faster and easier for me. And it's built to last. With durable anti-stain materials and recycled components, the MX Master 4 is designed for the long run. Ergonomically, it's also great. It's the best mouse I've ever used. It feels like it's sculpted to my hand. My wrist never gets tired, so I love it. The MX Master 4 is the core of my entire Logitech setup. Next, let's talk about the MX Mechanical Keyboard, where you can also map all of these keys to do different things. The way you can map with these Logitech products really easily is great because I can add smart actions to the keys on the keyboard. For example, I map the insert key to run my dev build so I don't have to type the same command over and over again. I also like this specific mechanical keyboard because the switches feel really tactile, but at the same time, they're not overly loud. This way I can use it when I'm programming and live streams, videos, and I'm not gonna annoy anybody. And then finally, the MX Brio webcam they sent me is really high quality and I've actually transitioned over to using it for my live streams. It's got good image, natural colors, and even adjust to the lower lighting when it's late. The Logitech setup isn't about just having cool gear though. It's about boosting productivity and removing friction so that you can work faster and better. Every shortcut, every macro, every ergonomic detail, it all adds up to just boost your workflow and productivity. If you guys are interested in any of this Logitech gear, I'll link it in the description of this video.
All right, next, let's talk about software. For the command line, I don't go crazy with custom aliases because I could forget them over time or they just become a little bit convoluted and more things that I have to remember. Instead, I do a lot of command chaining, meaning I'll have one command, then I'll do and, and then another command. So it runs two commands simultaneously. For example, git pull and npm run dev. This is a simple chain of two commands together to pull down the stuff I need from my repo and then start my dev server. Next, my text editor and extensions. Much like a lot of other people, if you don't know Visual Studio Code, one of the most popular text editors that people use in programming, I use that with a bunch of extensions. I keep it pretty lean, but the right extensions do make a difference. I use Prettier to auto format everything, keep everything clean. I use Copilot, of course, to help me generate code. I use Fuzzy Search to help me jump between files easily, and I use the Code Rabbit extension for version control, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then last but not least, software-wise, I use iTerm for terminal. This is my go-to terminal. It has been since like 2017 or something. I've never even thought about changing it because I love it so much. I use the split panes all the time, so I'm running my server, I'm navigating through files, adding files, changing things. Maybe I'll even have another pane if I wanna do something with GitHub or look at another project and see the changes between two folders. I also love that it allows you to search your terminal history. So if I forget this long command I was working on the day before, I could just search it up so that I don't have to retype it. So none of these things are super flashy, but they do remove a lot of friction when I actually sit down to code. Now let's talk about what some might consider essential if you're a programmer these days, which is automation productivity. You know, it seems like there's two camps of people and a lot of developers miss the days of coding everything, using your brain, and I'm a real programmer and they feel that authentically and they're reluctant to supporting AI, they make fun of vibe coding and all that stuff. But I'd be shocked if I heard about someone coding nowadays that's not at least using it a little bit. So for me, I'm an open AI person. I've been using it for years at this point. And while there's different models that come out, different companies like Anthropic, Claude Code, and I try them out and at certain times they might seem better. There's always new versions coming out and competing, but, but ChatGPT has always just had one of the easiest user interfaces for me. I find it extremely easy to use. And it's really effective when it comes to long-term discussions about is it right to do this? Is it right to do that? What direction should I go here? What are the pros and cons of each decision I'm making while I'm building something? So I have pretty long format discussions each and every day whenever I'm building something with ChatGPT to make sure I'm doing things in the most optimal way. That's kind of like the higher level, like how should I go about building this? What is the best way to do this? Why is this better than this? Then when it comes to the actual coding part, once you have your ideas and boilerplate code, you can then go in and try and use your brain yourself a little bit, but then you can use something like Copilot to help you out at that point, which I personally use for just generating smaller amounts of code, like a simple function. If I don't wanna type out a 20 line function, Copilot can help me there. Using them in combination together, as long as you make sure you know what's going on in your project before you add it, is really just gonna speed up your development by like 5X at least, in my opinion. And then recently for version control, I discovered something called Code Rabbit, which I have been using recently. This is a company that hooks up to GitHub and I've added the extension into VS Code and it automates the entire Git process. So all the pull request stuff, explaining everything about all the changes. I don't even have to worry about that anymore. All of the checks on the code before I push it up to GitHub, it does all of that. So Code Rabbit uses automation to learn your project, help you improve it, help you make sure it's good, and then help you document it. So that's pretty nice as well. In the grand scheme of things, it just saves me a ton of time trying to describe changes and like pull requests and stuff like that. It goes through everything and tests everything for you. And then lastly, automation wise, not in the AI sense, but just in speeding up workflow, I do use some shell scripts sometimes to speed up repetitive tasks. If you don't know what shell scripts are, they're basically little files that you could store a bunch of different commands in, you run this shell script, and then it'll run all of those commands in order. So if you're doing the same thing over and over again, they're nice to have in certain circumstances and could speed everything up instead of running everything individually. Now, last but not least, this is also a very important final hack that I wanna give you guys for productivity. This is put your cell phone in the other room. 
With how social media is now and how crazy the world is, there's constantly news and viral things every single day. And even just a simple text message will get you on your phone and then boom, you're scrolling TikTok, watching videos, doing this, and 30 minutes, 40 minutes have gone by. If I'm gonna work on something, then taking the phone, which is basically an extension of myself, putting it somewhere else so that it doesn't distract me is a complete game changer. It sounds basic, but you would be absolutely shocked at how much you will check your phone or do things during work. So those are all the programming productivity hacks I use to just work faster and better. I'd love to hear what you guys use for productivity, what kind of software, what kind of hardware gear that you use, or any other tips that you think might be helpful. Drop them as a comment below. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.